In today's video, we're going to be talking about all of the newest features that are available to you as an editor inside Premiere Pro, as well as some of the awesome features that were just announced during October's Adobe Max conference coming down the pipeline in Premiere Pro Beta. I'm so excited about a lot of these features, and you should be too, and I'm going to get into all of that coming right up. Before I begin, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adobe, which is cool because we're talking about Premiere Pro, yo! Let's dive right in! Numero uno, Adobe Stock Audio. If you're unaware, you can now access royalty-free music in the Essentials Sound Panel in Premiere Pro. So if you don't have your Essentials Sound Panel up, you can go to Window, Essential Sound, and right here next to Edit is Browse, and available to you are all of these stock tracks. You can sort by moods, genres, filters like tempo, duration, whether the track has vocals or not, and their audio partners like Epidemic Sound and Gemendo. Currently, we're looking at a previous video I did about slow motion inside Premiere Pro. And if I wanted to preview different music for the beginning of this video, I could just do this. <laughs> well, come on down. Did you know that we could learn about Premiere Pro? All right. Oh, if circus wasn't what you were looking for, how about on today's video, we're gonna be learning about slow motion. That's kinda cool. Let's try one more. Uh, slow motion, guys. That's what we're gonna be learning today. If you think the background music is too loud while you're previewing it, guess what? You can just like go to this little volume button down here. Or you wanna turn it up? All right, we could do that. Feeling this one? I'm feeling this one. I can click anywhere on the music right here, and since Timeline Sync is on, it's actually gonna move anywhere on the timeline to where I click inside the song. So you could see where that, you could see me get slapped in the face at 24 <laughs> frames per second. <laughs> very cool, very cool, very cool. But hey, Javier, how do you actually use that music in the timeline? Well, Adobe's made it really easy for you. Let me show you. So let's say I wanna use this spin in the wheels, groovy, relaxing, old school song. I'm gonna. I like that, man. Uh, you got a couple options that you can do. I could right click, add to project, save to local folder, or save to a library. You can also just click and drag it straight onto your timeline. Inside your project bin, that puts it inside stock Adobe Media. Once your project's all said and done to license that music, you could double click the shopping cart and that will take you directly to an Adobe stock screen. Currently, I have an account with Adobe stock and it's telling me that I will use one of my 10 licenses here if I were to confirm that. If you have any questions on licensing or how the whole subscription plan works with Adobe stock, you can go to stock adobe.com slash plans. I will also have a link to it in the description below. Number two, scene edit detection. This is a super helpful feature if you're somebody like a colorist and you get one main export from your editors, instead of going through and having to find specific frames and cut them one by one, now you can use scene edit detection to cut your clip up automatically. Another situation where this would be super beneficial is if you were repurposing a longer piece of content or some sort of master export for social social media. You can rearrange those clips however you need to for it to be effective on those social platforms. Let's show you how to do it. If you right click on your clip underneath speed and duration, we now have scene edit detection. Inside the window, you get the options of apply a cut at each detected cut point. You can create a bin of the sub clips from each detected cut point, and you can create a clip marker at each detected cut point. So I'm going to create a bin of sub clips as well as apply the cut at each cut point. Hit analyze. And as you can see, it does a very good job. In fact, it knew exactly when I switched my frames in my zoom transition. And even better yet, check out when I continue this one clip, I artificially zoom in on that clip and it doesn't create a cut because it's the same take, but the moment it switches, boom. Very impressive, Premiere Pro. Inside the project panel, we have a bin of all of the sub clips that were made. Obviously, I should have made this a much shorter title for this example, but you get the point. And I can click and drag these onto the timeline. And as you can see, they line up perfectly with the cut that's on the timeline. Very cool. But hey, Javier, let's move on to the next one, performance improvements. In previous updates of Premiere Pro, we saw accelerated hardware encoding. And now if you have a Windows machine, you have a much smoother decoding process of the H.264 in HEVC codecs. Personally, I'm a Mac user, so I can't really show you those differences on my screen right now. But if you check out a video that Lila from YouTube just published, you can see the differences in the performance playback from the previous version of Premiere Pro to 14. 
14.5 and man, it looks exciting how quick that playback is for the H.264 format. I'll link that video in the description below. Now let's talk about some of the exciting new features that they just announced at Adobe Max in October 2020. A lot of these features are publicly available in the public beta of Premiere Pro, which I'll show you how to get to here in a second. And one of the features like the automatic transcription for speech to text, yes, that is a thing. Yes, that's what I'm most excited about. And those who are interested in that feature just need to submit their info to apply for early access. I'll have a link to that application in my description below. But first, let me show you how to download the public beta, then we'll get into the new feature called Quick Export. Open up the Creative Cloud desktop app. In order to access the Premiere Pro beta version, all you have to do is go to your apps tab and right here underneath beta apps, you'll find everything that's publicly beta for anyone to test out. I'm gonna hit open on Premiere Pro beta. And while that's booting up, I definitely want to stress here that when you're utilizing the beta versions of these apps, it's not for mission critical type of work. There are a lot of kinks that you may encounter, so this is mainly for you to test out and experience new features within Premiere Pro. Another thing to clear up is that the beta version of Premiere Pro and your full version of Premiere Pro are two separate programs, so you can have both installed on your computer at the same time. If you ever wanna see what the newest update is in your version of the beta, just go up to this little beaker jar and boom, they'll show you a complete list of all of the different things that they're working on inside the beta version. And right here at the top, you can see the definition of quick export. Export your sequence with just a few clicks by pressing the quick export button conveniently located in the header bar. I've loaded up my same coffee montage video from before. And if I wanted to export this, I would go up to this quick export icon right here, click it. And now you have a very concise dialogue box that will give you all the information that you need to just export something quickly within Premiere Pro, hence quick export. Underneath are presets. If you need to know the settings of the export, they're all right here. It's H.264, 1920 by 1080, frame rate. It's gonna be variable bit rate, one pass, target 2.3 megabytes. There's the time, stereo audio, and it also gives you the estimated file size. I hit export and it automatically starts exporting from the quick export window. Very cool. Now let's get to the feature I'm most excited about, the new captioning workflow within Premiere Pro. Again, I just wanna reiterate that we are using the beta for this. This isn't anything that's completely flushed out, but let's go ahead and look at it. Once I've opened up Premiere Pro beta, I'm going to go up to this little beta up here in the top, go to enable feature and click new captions workflow. Once you enable this feature, it's going to cause it to only work with Premiere Pro beta. So again, use this with caution. It's probably just something that you want to test out at this point in time. What I've already done is create a SRT file of this video clip. If you don't know what a .SRT file is, it's basically the formatted captions file that you upload and you also create in a video editor like Premiere Pro. I'm going to click and drag this onto my timeline. Right off the bat, you can tell that there's something completely new here in Premiere Pro and it's the captions track. You can turn it on and off by clicking this button right here. I'm gonna zoom in and now you can see that these all kind of just act like normal clips here in Premiere Pro. You can edit them as you normally would a clip inside Premiere, which is so much more intuitive than the previous version of trying to do captions inside Premiere Pro. And speaking of the word captions, the window where you would edit this is no longer called that. It's actually called text. So I'm gonna open up my text layer and I want you to notice something when I hit play here. In the video today, we're gonna learn about all the different ways that you can change the speed of your clips in Premiere Pro. So there's a lot that I need to fix about the timing of these subtitles, but I hope you are noticing one thing over here on the side. As I scroll through, do you notice that the captions are moving along with the playhead. It's so cool how they light up as the playhead goes through. With this first title, I just wanted to say in the video today, and I wanna take this line, we're gonna, and move it to the next line. In the video today, we're gonna learn about all the different ways that you can change the speed of your clips in Premiere Pro. The other thing is I want to move the timing and it's so much easier to do this in this kind of captions workflow as opposed to the other one. One thing I want you to notice is as I change the endpoint of this caption, it changes up here on the caption as well. One other thing is I wanna be able to see these titles better. So I'm going to use my selection tool here hold shift and select all of my titles. As you can see, they all get grayed right there. Now, maybe I'll just do a normal Helvetica. Let's 
make it much bigger. The thing that I'm just trying to point out here is that you're utilizing the essential graphics tab to create your subtitles, which I think is a much better interface to do something like this than the previous captions workflow. If you wanna add or create new captions, just hit this plus sign and type whatever you want. But the biggest aspect of all of this is the transcription part where you'll be able to send your clips up to Adobe Sensei and then have it come back down all transcribed and get a timeline looking like this with the captions already up there with your clips. And once you're able to do something like that, editing will get so much faster. Could you imagine like if a uh, producer came up to you and said, hey, where's the part where we said slow motion? Well, if I type in the word slow, there we go. I can hit down. There's how many times I said slow in this cut. Could you imagine every single time that you want to cut your footage and edit it, but you're trying to think of different parts or find different nouns that would play towards a part in your stories, your edits or your videos, your films, whatever it is, this is such a powerful tool now to search and have it completely on the timeline, have your playhead move along with you. So many possibilities. Again, even right here, it says that you can join the early access program if you hit the transcript from the beta version. If you're looking for a demonstration from beginning to end of the speech to text transcription, Jason Levine just posted a video about it and he actually shows in real time taking a clip uploading it to Adobe Sensei, having it come back down with the captions already there and then loading it into the caption editor. I would highly suggest if you're curious about this kind of technology right now, check out that video. I'll have that in the description below as well. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below on what you would like to see on further iterations of Premiere Pro. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. If you like this whole type of video style, don't forget to subscribe. I just told you to do so many things. I hope you do one of those things. There's some videos on the side. You could click on those too. All right. <laughs> so much talking at the end. All right. Bye guys.